Hello, I'm Mal and welcome to Darkest Dungeon, a deeper look at traits. So um, as I'm putting this video together, uh, Darkest Dungeon has just moved to Steam Early Access. Uh, it's uh, February 5th, 2015, um, and there's still a lot of misinformation about things and I, I think people are still learning the game obviously because it's, it's still so new. Um, but I think I have a decent understanding here of how traits work, how they're acquired, and if you get uh, uh, negative things happening uh, trait-wise, how you can deal with it. Okay, so first off, let's take a look at the traits. Um, we'll look at some examples of both positive and negative ones, and then how to deal with them if you really have a character that you you, you know you want to keep, you don't want to dismiss them. So how do you how do you keep them right? Because if they've got a bunch of negative things, you know it might not be worthwhile to have them. Um, and we'll talk about what's it worth expense wise um, and sometimes it's it's maybe not even worth it and you might want to just recruit a new person of that class and and start over depending on how much experience they have. So I have this um, little side campaign that I'm doing uh, and you can see the set of characters I have um, trying to pick up as many different classes as possible. This is not part of my regular let's play though I will have this appear um, in my season one uh, let's play, but these characters are obviously not part of that. So let's take a look at Renald here. Renald and Demoth uh, seem to be, uh, when you start a new campaign, characters that you always get. So if I bring up Renald under his quirks, he's got quite a few positive ones. So he's got Warrior of Light. So if l the light level's above 75, he gets plus 10% damage. That's pretty good, especially early on. Uh, tactician plus 15% damage, and then Ruins Adventure, so if he's in the Ruins, he gets plus 20% Stress Resist. That's pretty good, too, um, but that's in the Ruins, so, I mean, eventually you're going to stop going there, but at least initially, it's pretty good. Now, on the flip side, he has Kleptomaniac, so he'll, like, just grab loot, uh, and the group doesn't get it. Uh, God-fearing in town, he'll only pray for Stress Relief. That's... I mean, that's not too bad. It can be problematic, and, and I'll show you why. So we'll step away from uh, Renald real quick, and we'll take a look at the impact of something like this. So Kleptomaniac, he just steals stuff. The group doesn't get it. God-fearing, let me show you how this could be a problem, potentially. If we go over to the Abbey, and the only way that Renald can get some, some relief is if, if he prays, right? Okay, so let's say right here... Especially early on in the game, you wanted to go for some stress relief, so you put him here, you say, okay, confirm the treatment, and then, you know, fine, he'll pray, and he'll get some stress back. But occasionally, whoever's running an establishment, in this case, this, whether he's a priest or a monk or what have you, this layperson might be using one of these three services himself, in which case this could be locked up, and if you have not yet been able to upgrade the number of slots in some of these things, then you'd have a situation where you'd come back from an adventure, you'd want to have him uh, get his stress reduced, but because of the only option being this, and it was being used, you wouldn't be able to. So his stress would just stay where it was. And that's unfortunate, because when you go out to adventure again, you want that, you want the people being, uh, you know, recuperating while you're, while you have another group of adventurers out, that way he's fresh, and then he could go the next time, so on and so forth. Okay, so that's that could be problematic. That's probably something we're going to want to address. Um, you know, he's got good stats otherwise, and some of these other bonuses are good. So, and in this case, I had played him a little bit, so he's almost level two. I, I really don't want to get rid of him. So, okay, I got to do something about God fearing. Then he's got Satanophobia, so he, he takes additional stress potentially against unholy type of monsters. Ah. Uh, that's, that too is problematic, but I don't know that that's a deal killer, right, for this character. And then Deviant Taste, he's not allowed to visit the brothel. Oh, okay, well, I don't know that that really matters, because he can't do these other things anyway, because he's locked in. Which which is kind of weird, right? So he, he's not allowed to visit the brothel, but he can only pray for stress relief anyway. So it's, so it's sort of like, who cares, really? Um... So I don't really care about Deviant Taste that much. Not a big deal to me. But Domaniac can be problematic because we lose stuff when we're adventuring if he takes it for himself. So really though, in terms of immediacy, 
the xenophobia or statephobia and God fearing. These two I've got to take care of. So if I go over to the sanitarium and I, and I believe this unlocks in week three. So you will have had to have gone on at least two adventures with your group. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's right. And it's subject to change. Remember, this is all very new. Uh, but if I go to the sanitarium and I take Ronald, I place him in here. OK, now I can pay to have these things removed. So I really need this removed, so I'm going to do it. So now he's being treated, so I can't I can't utilize him and I've removed one. OK, so this is the one that's going to go away. And then let's say the next time I want to get rid of God fearing. OK, then that's going to be another week that he's out. So you can see that removing these traits um, can be pretty time consuming and expensive. So yeah, upgrading allows for more quick treatment slots to be to, and reduces the treatment cost. I've actually already upgraded this somewhat. Um, I could upgrade it again to reduce the cost further. But my, my point being is that you can do this process. Um, it's a way to uh, sort of preserve your better characters. But unless they're really, really good and particularly at lower levels, is it worth it? OK, so like here's an example. OK, this is a new bounty hunter. He's got hard noggin, so he's got plus 15 percent stun resist. But he's got a fear of enclosed spaces, claustrophobia. This is probably a wash. We could we could resolve this at any time. Um, so this is probably somebody you would want to keep. Uh, let's see. Compulsive suffers intense need to do specific actions. Uh, minus two speed. Ah, speed's not that big a deal for the plague doctor. And then he's got amateur weaponsmith, so weapon upgrades cost less. That's nice, but that's also not what you primarily use these guys for, so it's sort of meh. And then unyielding, plus 10% death blow resist. That's really good. So when you look at this character initially, he's probably worth investing in over the long term because these positive quirks are really nice. And that's that's what I that's my point I'm trying to get across is you just have to kind of go through and, you know, is it worth it? OK, now here's a character that's almost level two, which would be really the only reason why I would think about keeping her. Um, but she's got a lot of negatives, right? So weak grip, minus three crit chance. She's a healer. I don't know if that matters. Manic for money. Mm. Witness after seeing troubled behavior will not take part in prayer activity in town. In town will only visit the brothel for stress release. None of these are really that critical, I guess. Um, she has improved balance. She's deadly. She's a Warren's adventurer, so she's got plus 20 stress resist in the Warren's. I, I guess this is a wash. Um, I again, I'm stressing the fact that you just have to look at it and see, um, you know, is is the cost worth it both in time and expense when you could just recruit another person and start fresh. So like if we go down here to uh, new adventures. Let's take a look. Misses the spot. Fear of the beast. Ruins explorer. Eh. Uh, what's this? Obsessed with cleanliness. Okay. Slayer of mankind and stout. Okay, this is pretty good in terms of quirks. So we've got one that we might, you know, have to get rid of at some point. But he's got good positive quirks. So this is somebody you probably want to look at. You know, bring it on board. If you've got two of the same class available for recruiting as well, it's going to be these traits that make the difference in terms of what you want to take. Not so much the skills, which I'll probably cover in another video. And the reason being is because skills can be learned and trained and you can sort of trade around what skills that you want to use when you go out for each adventure. You don't have to use the same ones every time that you go out once you've learned others. Um, so the initially, uh, and I did this when I started playing is that I would look at a crusader perhaps and I'd say, oh, I really want one that has X, Y, Z skill and that one doesn't have it. So I, I don't want him. I want this other one. That's less of an issue. You're, the determining factor initially, I think, is what class do you want and then what are the quirks? So slow reflexes minus one speed. Um, That's not a huge deal as Warren's Explorer, which could be useful and has Ruins Technician, which is definitely useful, especially early on. This is a good grab. 
Yeah, this grave robber with these stat with these quirks, this is a good deal. So I hope that made sense. I hope that gives you a little bit of clarity on how traits work. Um, and at least early on in the game, uh, will help you make some better picks on who's worthwhile and who's not. Anyway, thanks for joining me. Uh, I hope that you did like the video. If you did, please hit that thumbs up button. As always, I appreciate your comments and feedback. Thanks so much for watching. And until next time, I'm Mal, and I will see you later.